Good afternoon from MWC Kigali here in Rwanda. I'm together with Mashda Lalu Kasi, Vice President and Head of Customer Unit West and Southern Africa at Ericsson. Hello, nice to meet you again. Nice to meet you, Akim. Always a pleasure. I agree, likewise. So, MWC 2025, so we hear a lot of topics about how operators investing in the networks and digital services and how we can, let's say, reach the next level. So, you lead Ericsson's operations across West and Southern Africa. So, what are the biggest shifts you're seeing in how operators are investing in the networks and into digital services? Well, uh, we have to put this investment in the global context, but also in the context of what Africa is, uh, you know, um, going through right now. And we see a big shift in, in focus in terms of how Africa is becoming more of a producer of technology versus a consumer of technology. And I think all our partners uh, would agree with me that it's all about how we can bring the right connectivity, a reliable, scalable, and trusted connectivity to enable the innovation for the next phase of Africa. So all the investments that we see right now are about you know, shifting and modernizing the networks from legacy uh, uh, technologies mm -hmm. to uh, 5G, uh, mm -hmm. but also we continue to deploy 4G. And we, we do expect 5G to, uh, to take off uh, at a quite a, a big pace, uh, mm -hmm. expecting some 400 million subscri uh, subscri uh, subscribers by, by the end of 2030. Mm -hmm. But we also uh, see a lot of focus on, on cloud and how we can transform the core networks uh, into the cloud for efficiency, for increased productivity and reliability as well. And the third element of investment is around AI and how AI can enable a better operation of the networks. Of course, all of this comes under the umbrella of how we can increase in the value chain, how we can enable uh, uh, affordability mm. to make you know, connectivity for everybody mm. and leave no one behind in the mm. continent. So you mentioned earlier the technology which is basically manufactured created in Africa versus just consuming it. So what is Ericsson's strategy in that? Well, what we try to do is we try to get, you know, uh, much closer to the ecosystem. We try to listen and to talk to the entire value chain. I mean, we, we talk, of course, to CSPs as our main partners in the continent, but we talk also to the government to understand their digital agendas. Mm -hmm. We talk to uh, some of the uh, small and medium enterprises to understand their needs. And we look at other segments like mining, ports. These are all, uh, you know, important uh, contributors to uh, to the digital economy in the continent. So for us, it's very important to listen, to understand, mm -hmm. and then how we can translate this to solutions that are fit for purpose. We we are actually working a lot on defining what can be the solutions for Africa for the future, and we have uh, throughout uh, you know uh, this conversation try to bring our latest technology. Uh, whether it's in the radio part or in the cloud part, but also we're looking at how we can expose the full capabilities of 5G mm -hmm. to the entire ecosystem through uh, APIs mm -hmm. so that we can get also local developers to innovate on the 5G as a platform. Yeah. Oh, very interesting. So, so you would say it's important to have solutions which are really, let's say, addressing the needs, the local needs, so it's more like a tailor-made product Offering? Well, listen, I wouldn't call it tailor-made because the element of standardization is very mm. important so that we keep the networks reliable, scalable, and also we create an element mm. of harmonization. But we need to listen to the market and bring back that knowledge and these insights to our research mm. and development centers mm. so that we can have products that we can deploy in Africa, but we can scale up as well so that we can also achieve an economy of scale that makes it affordable and, and accessible to, to a larger uh, number of, uh, of uh, partners and, and, and consumers uh, as well. Yeah, that's a very valid point. So how are your customers in the region approaching the balance between expanding coverage and driving uh, profitability in today's market? Well, I would say it's a, it's a big challenge. It's, uh, it's not an easy equation to, to answer to, but the way we try to address it is we look at it from two angles. So, of course, we always work on how we can reduce the TCO, which is the total cost of ownership. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, 
in, it encompasses many factors. One element is, of course, looking at, uh, at our products uh, and how we can make them you know, uh, more affordable, but we also look at the total picture. I mean, one element that is very important for the continent is energy, mm -hmm. and all our products are uh, really focused on reducing the energy uh, consumption on, or how we uh, call it in Ericsson, breaking the energy curve. Mm -hmm. And there we are leveraging on technologies like AI to reduce uh, to reduce the consumption and make it uh, make it more, I mean, more from an economic perspective, but also from a sustainability perspective. So these are are some of the uh, areas that we are trying to address. But the other side of the equation is how we can maximize the value, how we can help operators to make money out of the investment they're making. And there we're looking at the monetization, what kind of use cases. Yeah. Uh, 5G, of course, is happening now in the continent, and one of the main uh, use cases we see uh, bringing value in Africa is fixed wireless access. Mm -hmm. But fixed wireless access can only bring uh, the expected quality of service if we are uh, moving towards 5G uh, standalone. Mm -hmm. So this is also a conversation we're having with, with our customers to see how we can not only deploy 5G, but how yeah. we can take the full benefits of 5G through technologies like uh, network slicing, or even so in some cases, dedicated networks. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. that's quite a lot. Quite yeah, well, absolutely. It, as I said, I mean, it's not an easy uh, yeah. question to answer too, and it's always about finding the right balance between yeah having an efficient network, but also looking at the uh, revenue streams that we can generate and build on top of the infrastructure. So you have to be very agile in your daily, let's say. Afternoon. Absolutely, absolutely. And it starts by us listening and reacting to the realities of the market we, we operate in. So we also see a lot of momentum around local innovations. So we just crossed that earlier. So how is Ericsson helping operators and enterprises in Africa unlock new value beyond just connectivity? Well, listen, I think, I think I've spoken uh, uh, about it earlier. For us, one element that makes 5G an interesting and transformative um, uh, technology for Africa is all the capabilities it offers. And it goes beyond you know, the latency and uh, the throughput. It's you know, when you open the capabilities of the entire uh, network to developers, then you can really scale up innovation to a level that we can't even now you know realize so for me uh, and for, from an Ericsson standpoint network exposure is a big uh, area where we try to focus and we try also to bring the entire ecosystem to support us in this effort and we're having uh, conversations with local partners on how they can uh, develop applications that we can scale uh, based on the capabilities of 5g network so in your, let's call it the beyond connectivity strategy, would you say that sustainability also plays one of the main roles for you? You absolutely. mentioned earlier the energy consumption, which is not uh, only the single part. Uh, absolutely. So sustainability is, uh, has always been at the heart of what Ericsson does. Mm -hmm. And there, there are multiple uh, uh, elements to it. Yes. Uh, energy is, uh, is definitely one area where we uh, try you know, to, uh, to work uh, in a continuous way yes. to break the energy curve. I mean, uh, you, you understand very well that now that we are deploying 5G over a network that already has uh, uh, elements from the 2G, 3G, 4G, we need yeah. to find a way to break this energy curve and make it uh, from a sustainability, but from a cost uh, affordability as well. Yeah. But there is another element to it, which is uh, the capacity buildup. Yeah. How we can uh, you know, partner with the entire ecosystem to build the digital skills. This is key elements for us to see uh, innovation and the next wave of innovation in Africa. And there we are also very active uh, with our partners. I mean, uh, many of them uh, were working with Smart Africa, but we also work with UNESCO. We work uh, uh, through multiple global uh, organizations to bring uh, the global uh, digital know-how to the continent, but we also have government relationship. We have MOUs signed in some of the countries. I can talk about the one in Nigeria, where we're having a common objective of skilling up uh, uh, young uh, yeah. talents so that we, we have them ready for, for all this innovation that we intend to bring to the market.
So that's you also bringing something back to the market, basically. By absolutely. To empower. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we 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 are a global company, but mm. we uh, we uh, uh, operate locally, and we want to be close to the communities that we serve. We want to understand their needs, and we want to also pay back to them. Looking ahead, what excites you most about the next phase of digital growth in Africa, and how is Ericsson preparing to enable it? Well, listen, I think I think there is a, a momentum that is happening right now. I'm very, very excited and optimistic about the future. Uh, Africa has one of the largest digital talent pools of the world. I mean, you can uh, imagine, I mean, 1.4 billion uh, uh, population, half of it uh, below the age of 20. These yeah. are all digital natives. Mm -hmm. And these are the ones that are embracing technology at its scale and at a pace that we don't see anywhere else. So this young generation is what will make it happen for, mm -hmm. for Africa. They are the not only consumer of technology, as I said earlier, but they are also producer of energy. So this is a part that that excites me the most. Uh, some of the shifts that we see in Africa is also, uh, you know, all uh, uh, you know stakeholders are now focusing on the digital economy and putting digital plans at the heart of the country's strategy. And from that perspective, we try from our standpoint also to align our country's strategy to the digital plans of the countries. And we see synergies there and we try to work together with them on you know, making it happen. And then, of course, I mean, Africa is not different from the rest of the world. A lot is happening in the AI uh, segment, yeah. and we really believe that AI can be transformative for Africa. We need to work together on making it uh, fair mm. technology to everyone, accessible, but also we need also to make sure that we have uh, local content that is taken in consideration so that it becomes also uh, an inclusive uh, technology for Africa. So I can add you to the group of people I talked throughout the last two days who are very, very optimistic. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think uh, Africa uh, is the place where things are happening. So, uh, so uh, a lot to, uh, to, to see coming in the near future. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. A pleasure always. It was Tech Africa News from MWC Kigali. You can find more on techafricanews.com.